Tonight's reading comes from James Kerr's Legacy, what the All Blacks can teach us about the business of life. The Maori have a word, taonga, which means treasure. The black jersey is taonga, a sacred object, this black jersey with its silver fern. Since 1905, when the originals arrived and took Europe by storm, the black jersey has captured the essence and hopes of this small island nation. Over the last hundred years or so, it has transformed from a makeshift garment with laces at the neck to the modern, sweat-wicking, tight-fitting, gladiatorial armour of today. But at heart, it remains the same. A symbol of excellence, of hard work, and of a New Zealander's ability to become, with effort, sacrifice and skill, the best in the world. After an early lunch, chicken, baked potatoes, the players head upstairs in twos and threes. The captain, Richie McCaw, Kieran Reid, Tony Woodcock, Brad Thorne, Joe Rocococo, the chosen ones. They collect their prize. Black shorts, black socks with three white stripes, the black jersey with a silver fern. As the jerseys go on, so do the game faces. The players become all blacks. I can still remember Richie McCaw's first jersey, Gilbert Anoka says. He spent about 45 seconds to a minute with his head just buried in it. Today is Richie McCaw's 91st test. A win against the Welsh today is not enough, says a pundit. It has to be a big win. In the stadium, beer cans rattle against the hoardings. A helicopter thumps overhead. Someone sells t-shirts. McCaw steps off the bus. There is a cry, the traditional Maori welcome. A lone Maori male with a thrusting spear. There is an explosion of camera flashes. McCaw accepts the challenge on behalf of the team. Women swoon, men too. The All Blacks head for the sheds. Under the stadium, there are trestle tables loaded with liniments, bandages and cups of carbohydrates. The New Zealand flag is on the wall, the Union Jack and the Southern Cross. There are no histrionics. The team prepares silently, many in headphones. Above 35,000 voices chant, black, black, black. The coaches hang back as the players prepare. There is no rousing rhetoric, a word here, a backslap there. Now it is all about the players about the being of team. The talking is done, it's time to play rugby. The All Blacks win 42-7. In the sheds, the drinks flow. The room fills with journalists, politicians, sponsors, their sons, their sons' best friends. Dr Deb administers stitches. Richie McCaw drags himself out for the media. A few forwards shiver in large, ice-filled rubbish bins, a state-of-the-art recovery technique. Pacifica rap plays, then some reggae. After a while, Darren Shand, the manager, gently but firmly, clears the room. It is just the team, the inner sanctum, all household names. Squashed together on the benches, they look like huge schoolboys, and they debrief. And this is when something happens that you might not expect. Two of the senior players, one an international player of the year twice, each pick up a long handled broom and begin to sweep the sheds. They brush the mud and the gauze into small piles in the corner. While the country is still watching replays and school kids lie in bed dreaming of All Blacks glory, the All Blacks themselves are tidying up after themselves sweeping the sheds, doing it properly, so no one else has to, because no one looks after the All Blacks. The All Blacks look after themselves. 